morning. Happy Tuesday. How are we doing today? I look all right? My entourage is here. They're getting ready to go out for breakfast. I'm going with them. Hey, I want to talk to you today about how to quickly possess the promises of God. How many of you know that there is a big difference between owning something and possessing something? <clears throat> when God called Abraham out of his land and his family, and he said, go to a land that I will show you, and I will give you this land, he says. And then God said to the children of Israel, when they come out of Egypt, he says, I have given you the land. Go in and possess it. Now, they didn't do that. They didn't go in and possess the land. As a matter of fact, it took them probably, it took them 40 years before they would even attempt to possess the land. And it took them another five years to drive out the enemy. But they owned it. Now, here's, here's the thing <clears throat> about the promises of God. All the promises of God, you already own. You own them. Because God has given them to you. He's already given them to you. But for you to have them in your hand is something different. Now, I want to show you this in uh, 2 Timothy. Somewhere in Timothy. I'll have to find it. Second Timothy. Fight the good fight of faith. Uh, 1 Timothy 5, 12. It says, fight the good fight of faith. <clears throat> Lay hold of eternal life where you are called. He says, he says, fight the good fight of faith and lay hold of eternal life. Lay hold means grab it. How many of you know that salvation is something that, that is, is not automatic, and, but, but it's a gift from God? And everybody, ha, ha, everybody is eligible for it. And <clears throat> literally, everybody already owns salvation but less than 10% of the people, even in this country, actually possess it. They haven't laid hold of it. They haven't taken it. It's like forgiveness. Forgiveness is something that belongs to us. How many of you know that <clears throat> because of what Jesus did, you have a God-given, blood-bought right to be forgiven if you make a mistake, if you sin. Blood-bought, God-given right to be forgiven. But are you automatically forgiven? No. You have to receive it. It tells us in 1 John 1, 9, if we confess our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive our sin and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. We have to ask God for forgiveness and then receive it. Amen? It's the same with <clears throat> the promises of God. We have to receive them. We have to lay hold. We have to take them. That's why it tells us in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let us therefore come boldly into the throne of grace that we might may find grace to help in time of trouble. Walk in boldly. We talked about that Sunday in church, about how to boldly receive from God. You have to be bold. You have to be bold. I want to show you something here. In Galatians chapter 3, and uh, I can just take that, actually... I can just take this out of my Bible because I have spent so much time with this that this part of my Bible just fell apart. Now, that's a long time. 
It tells us in Galatians 3, look at this. Galatians 3, 29. Actually, let's look at 28. It says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Let me tell you something. There's no difference. Everybody is the same. All people are the same. We all come from Adam. Amen. There's only two classes of people in this country. Saved and lost. Only two categories of people. Everybody falls into one of those two. Everybody's either saved or lost. And here it tells us there's no difference between male and female. Bond or free. It doesn't matter your, your social status. doesn't matter how much money you make. None of this matters. Now, look what he's leading up to when he says this. He's not just saying this just to get that point across. He's saying this to lead up to something. Watch what he's leading up to. Watch what he's leading up to. Here he says, There's neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Now, all one means you're all the same in Christ. Now look what he's leading up to. Paul, when he says, and if you be Christ, then you are Abraham's seed. Everybody who is born again is considered to be the seed of Abraham. Doesn't matter if you're Jew or Greek, bond or free, male or free, female, tall or short, big or little, young or old. Doesn't matter what color you are. Doesn't matter where you came from. Doesn't matter where you live. None of that matters. Look at this. If you be Christ, you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise, which is the blessing. But very few people actually possess it. Let me give you some examples of people who do. Kenneth Copeland. Creflo Dollar. Jesse Duplantis. Bill Winston. Keith Moore. And Jimmy Kibler. As well as others. None, none of that... It doesn't make any difference who you are. But, even though every born again believer, it doesn't matter if you're full gospel, assembly of God, Methodist, God bless the Methodist, Presbyterian, non-denominational, charismatic, even those Bible believing, faith healing, tongue talking, meeting, going, CD listening, jumping up and down, running the aisles, raising their hands, all those people. We know who they are. We got a church full of them. Even those people, they are sons and daughters of Abraham. Abraham is their spiritual father. And look at this. Look at this. And heirs according to the blessing. Heir according to the blessing means the blessing of Abraham is your inheritance. The blessing of Abraham is your inheritance. It was left to you by your spiritual father, Abraham. He left it to you. Jesus ratified it. It's like, it's like 
when there's a will, the court, it has to be probated. This was probated. Jesus probated. It tells, it tells us right here. Now, I'm going to show you how he did it. It says here. So, it says here in verse 13 of Galatians 3. You should live in Galatians 3. Now, let me tell you. Galatians 3. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that the blessing of Abraham can come on the Gentiles. Now, the reason it says that is because before Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law, the only people who were eligible for the blessing were the Jews. But now that Christ has redeemed us, he has made us Gentiles eligible for the same blessing. And it is now our inheritance as well as the Jewish people. There's two groups of people that are, that are eligible for the blessing. The, the Jews by race and the Christians by adoption. By adoption. You have been adopted into the family and you are an heir of the promise. But you got to possess it. You have to possess it. Now, they don't call me the how-to preacher for nothing. I know how to possess the blessing. I and, and in this blessing of Abraham is healing as well as, as, as abundance. There is healing and abundance in this blessing. Remember in Luke chapter 13, Jesus healed the woman in the temple and, he, and then he said, and ought not this woman, this daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has uh, kept in bondage for 18 years, shouldn't she be loose and healed on the Sabbath? She was a daughter of Abraham. She was a covenant person. She, she was a part of the blessing. Healing belonged to her. If you are born again, I'm telling you, healing belongs to you. It belongs to you. You own it. You have a right to it. You absolutely have a right to be healed. You can go to God and demand that he heals you. Because you have a right to it. You can go to God and demand that he bless you. Because you have a right to it. Amen. Now, the blessing must be spoken. And that's where we come in. I know how to get the blessing of God into your life. Now we're going to talk about how to quickly possess your the promises of God. We're going to talk about this now for a few days because I want everybody to receive the promises of God. There's two kinds of preachers. The preachers who talk about the blessing and the preachers who show you how to get it. I'm the one who, I'm the how-to preacher. Amen. Tell everybody you know about this message. We're going to continue this tomorrow. I guarantee that I want all of my partners to walk in the fullness of God's blessing, to live in abundance and good health. I want all the people in my church, and they do, to live in health and to walk in the promises of God. Amen. Tell everybody you know, if you know somebody who is sick and broke, have them call me. If you know somebody who needs to be healed, please have them call me. They don't have to stay sick. We can get them healed because we know how to get the promises of God. Amen. Hey, go out there today and make it a great day. And remember this, when you tithe or make offerings to this ministry, call me at the same time because I want to speak a blessing over you. Amen. Hey, God's word will save your soul, heal your body, and pay your bills. <laughs>